Hey everyone, it's Owen from Resk Finance. Visit us at www.reskfinance.com for all the content in this video, plus our latest tutorials and courses. This is the second tutorial in our series, The Value of Everything. It's a free online course that will help you understand why and how analysts and investors calculate the value of all types of businesses, stocks, assets, and more. This is the second tutorial. In it, I'll quickly discuss what valuation is and the best, what the best investors are looking to find. But first, our disclaimer. Just give you a moment to read that. So in value investing, there are two terms you'll come across very often. The first is intrinsic value, uh, sometimes called a price target by sell side analysts. And the second one um, is more of a concept. It's the asymmetric return. Uh, we'll dig into these quickly. Oops, one too many. So intrinsic value, also called IV. It is the number that we calculate with a valuation model. It represents the worth of something, like a stock. We calculate intrinsic value using a model, a valuation model, like discounted cash flow analysis. But it's important to remember that models may not work in real life. Um, the intrinsic value that you calculate may also be different to the value that I calculate. Um, there is no way of knowing immediately who is correct, but both of us may be wrong. Um, and one important concept to know is that intrinsic value is different from price. So you'll see the price um, displayed in the media, but rarely will you see someone's valuation estimate. Um, sometimes you can log into particular portals like the Wall Street Journal or Thomson Reuters, and you'll find analyst price targets, um, which are valuations, but you'll rarely find good fund managers giving away their intellectual property and their intrinsic value estimates on a particular company. So what, I, what do I mean by intrinsic value is different from price? Um, here's a chart from our website. It shows the value of an asset uh, with the dotted gray line and its price with the blue line. Um, as you can see, the price of this investment moves around quite a lot. You can see it throughout here. Um, but, but the value of the investment does not fluctuate anywhere near as much. Um, it, it still changes, but not nearly as frequently as the price. Um, that's because the valuations that we create are based on the asset's fundamentals. So one way you can think about it is, is, if, is if you were valuing your local coffee shop. If you valued it today, would you value it tomorrow and the next day and the day after that? It's a lot of work that goes into it, so you probably wouldn't. Um, you would only value it when something changes with the business or if you learn something new about it. So in the stock market, when we learn um, or we, we, we find the latest results or we do some research and learn something new about the company. Um, you can also notice that the price and the value can move away from each other and sometimes by a lot. Um, so you can see here that the price keeps on moving away even though the intrinsic value increases slightly, the price is moving away much faster. Um, that's actually normal. So in the share market, you'll find that the price is often around the consensus intrinsic value, so the consensus of all analysts, but sometimes it's slightly more. Um, and this is the basic principle of, uh, behind intrinsic value. So if the intrinsic value is greater than the price of an asset, we say it is undervalued. Um, for example, if we valued Apple at $200 per share and it is priced at $150, we would say that it is undervalued. If we value Apple at $100 and it is priced at $150, we would say that it is overvalued. If the price equals the intrinsic value, we say it is around fair value. It's important to remember though that when these prices and valuations fluctuate, when there's, there's different margins between the two, it's, it's important to remember that they're just made from models. These valuations come from models, which like we said, may not represent real life. And when we do valuations, many of us make mistakes. So it's important to, to think about intrinsic value um, as being generally right than specifically right. Or in my case, it is better to be generally right than specifically wrong. Um, and that will give you some comfort around the price moving away from intrinsic value. And one way we can adjust for the difference between price and value and us potentially being wrong is a concept called the margin of safety, also called the margin of error. Um, this is the difference between our calculated value and market price. Um, you can see it here with the, the red line. Um, it's also known as the margin for error because it adjusts for us making 
that mistake in our research and or our valuation. So the second concept is asymmetric return. Um, let's say you are valuing Apple shares today and it's priced at $100. Anything above this white line here is profit and anything below it is a loss. You conduct your valuation and you find that Apple is worth either $110 or it's worth $90 per share, depending whether its latest device is a success. Let's say that both outcomes are equally likely. So if you bought Apple shares today, you will either lose $10, down here at $90, or you will make $10 in profit. Would you make this investment? The answer is you wouldn't, because even if your valuation is correct, the risk is the same as the reward. So you would make $10 or lose $10. Good investors want the potential return to be greater than the risk. In other words, we want an asymmetric return profile. So let's, let's go back to our example. Let's say we are valuing Apple shares again and it's still priced at $100. This time we conduct our valuation and we find that it is worth either $90 in the worst situation $110 if the new device is received well, or $150 if the latest device is a hit with consumers. Each outcome is equally likely. So what we have here is, if we buy Apple shares today, we believe that we will either lose $10, we will make $10, or $50 in profit. Would you take this investment? The answer is you would. Because if your valuation is correct, the potential returns greatly outweigh the risk. And you can see here that the two triangles are not the same. So we have this upside potential and this downside potential. These are the types of investments the best investors are trying to uncover. They know they won't get it right every time, but if they consistently take these risks with greater return potential, they expect to do well investing money over the long term. And that's the end of this tutorial. Um, there's be no more slideshows in this series, I promise you. Uh, we'll be creating evaluation models in our, we'll start creating evaluation models in our next tutorial. Um, remember there's, we're going to cover discounted cash flow, dividend models, earnings, power, value, and more. Um, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to find me on Twitter at Owen Rask or visit us, visit us online at raskfinance.com. And I look forward to seeing you soon.